Hi, everyone. So welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. I am just thrilled to be kind of meeting with you all today to get started on the holiday season. I know it's September and it feels like a ways off, but ornaments always just are so fun and they remind me of Christmas, of course, obviously, because you're hopefully decorating your tree or your home with them. So I'm really excited to dig into that. Um, like it was mentioned, you know, go ahead, show us the things that you're creating. I love to see them. So feel free to take me at the end. I'll put up some of the hashtags and um, the different people that you can follow. So um, tune in for that. But I'm excited to be here with you. So let's get started. All right. So what we want to first start out with is just kind of covering some of the basics with, you know, essentially color theory, learning a little bit about the colors and how colors combine and how they work. So I have this little pocket wheel here. You can pick these up at Michael's and craft stores all over, um, but it essentially can help you as you're first starting out and thinking about the colors that you may want to use when you are painting your ornaments. Obviously today I have a few colors picked out and we'll talk about those and kind of essentially how they work. Um, I'm also going to cover the different supplies that we'll be using throughout the show as well, and um, we'll kind of go through the tutorial and the demonstration too. So um, the basics of color theory essentially, and when you think about how colors work and combine, some things to keep in mind. Um, first and foremost, colors work really well together when they're complementary, and so that means they're kind of across from one another on the color wheel. So blue and orange tend to go well together. You know, you have blue, green, and maybe a red orange, or you could do a red violet and a yellow green. So again, those are your complementary colors. The other color um, pattern that works really well is analogous colors. And so those are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So that would be like, you could do blue, violet, and green together, or violet, red, and orange together. So it just kind of depends on you know, what you're doing and what feels good to you. So color theory works in general most of the time. Um, there are, of course, different ways to experiment with color and different things that work really well. Um, you can do split complementary, which would be like a blue with an orange and a yellow color or purple with green and yellow. So lots of different things that you can do with those, but essentially color theory works in your favor when you're mixing inks. Now with the Copic inks, some of them, especially the darker colors, there tends to be some colors that'll bleed out. And so you wanna be aware of undertones as well. Um, for today's colors, there I don't think there's usually an issue with that. Maybe the R43 has a little bit of orange that'll bleed out and I'll show you that in just a bit, but just kind of keep in mind to swatch your colors, sample them, just make sure that they combine and work well together when you're starting out. Other things to consider if you want to work with contrast, which would be adding maybe some darker tones or lighter tones, adding blacks and browns offer a lot of contrast and can help with um, just creating some depth and dimension as well. And you can kind of see on the color wheel what happens when you add black to colors, of course, and, and again, that comes a little bit with experimentation when it comes to color theory. But a pocket wheel is great. On the back side of this, it also talks about like um, triads and again, that split complementary and then complementary colors too. So it can be really helpful. All right, so let's dig into some of the colors. So we can talk a little bit about how they compare with that color wheel and color theory. So um, the first color that I have is B06, which is lavender. And then I also have the R43. And so together, these two colors are right next to each other on the color wheel. And so they work really well together because they're considered analogous. And then that R43 tends to have a little bit of orange in it. And so these will work really well together, even with some of the bleeding tones. And even with red violet, you're gonna maybe see a little bit of blue tone in there. But again, they're all next to each other on the color wheel, so they work really well together. So that's going to be one of the pairings that I'm going to do today. The other pairing that I'm going to use, um, I have BG23 and BG78. And now these two together are from the same color family. Of course, they're kind of in that blue-green category. 
the coral sea has a little bit of yellow um, to it, a little bit of that yellow tinge. Um, and of course, because they're in the BG family, there's a little bit of blue, but essentially again, all of those go together and they're analogous. So they work well um, and pair well with one another. And the final pairing that I have, which I may do, actually I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of the G94 with BG23 and some B06, and I may even throw in a little bit of that YR30, which is macadamia nut. So there's a little bit of everything to go around with those colors. And then I also have the clear blending, blending solution. Um, I have an older model of it. So this is the older bottle style and this is the newer bottle style in case anyone's wondering. You can also get the clear blending solution in a larger bottle as well, which um, is really nice to have around um, as a blending solution option. And I'll be using those just to, again, mix the colors together on the ornament itself. And so I have these ornaments here. They come in a pack of six from Michaels. So just so you can kind of see what they look like. And what I've done to these, because they are ceramic ornaments when you receive them, I have primed them with just a basic white primer. Um, you can get it at a hardware store. It's, it's nothing like special. You don't have to have a special brand, but a primer is nice because it gives it a slick surface. Whereas if you um, did not prime it ahead of time, it would just seep into the ornament, which can create a neat effect. But if you want it to be able to move around on the ornament, then you want to make sure to prime it first. We will also be using some foil flakes. And these foil flakes essentially are going to be the metallic shimmer. But there are lots of other options that you can use for metallic shimmer. Um, you can use like a gilded gold paint if you want to. You can use alcohol ink with metallic in it from different brands. Um, but for day today, I'm just going to show you what it's like to layer with the gold foil. Um, because it adds a little bit of texture and it's just something different um, that you can consider. But keep in mind that the options are endless for what you can use on ornaments. And to adhere the gold foil flake, we're just going to use regular Mod Podge in the mat. Um, so there's, you can use glue, different adhesive, anything that you have around in your house can work fine as well too. But this is what I'll be using for today. Mandy, and then we've I'm got also a question. Gonna, oh, sure. Manny, we've got a question from Kara. She wants to ask, would gesso work? It would potentially. Um, it would give that kind of slick surface. So if you have that around, give that a try. Um, but in terms of a primer, just a basic primer from a store. Um, like I think, actually, I have it right next to me. I can show you what I use. This is just the basic primer that I use. I buy this from Lowe's, I think Home Depot carries it. Again, any hardware store has an all-purpose just interior exterior primer. You can really use anything. Perfect, thank you. So in addition to all those supplies, also on the list I have Kmart Varnish and a Clear Glaze. And so these are on there. They're both from Krylon. Um, there are other types of varnishes that you can use. This is the one that I prefer to use. And this just seals up the alcohol ink. So the Kmart Varnish does that. And that will make it so um, it kind of seals everything in place so that then you can layer it with the Clear Glaze. And so when you use both of these together, it helps create a really nice seal to the ornament. And I'll show you what that looks like once we get going here as well. And then off to the side here, I have just kind of an arrangement of different tools that I might grab throughout. Um, this is just a little, you know, tweezers to pick up the, the foil because of course your skin oils can impact foil and tarnish the foil. So it's good to have a tweezers if you're going to be using the gold foil. I have some different brushes that are silicone, um, regular brush brushes, a fan brush. So some different options there. Again, you can use anything that you want. You don't even have to use a paintbrush if you don't want to, um, but I'll show you exactly um, kind of how I'll be using those. And then I also of course have um, a little air blaster here and this will again, blow the inks around on the surface, but you can use a hair dryer, which I also have nearby me. This is just a small little travel one or a straw. Um, I don't usually encourage using your breath like to blow on the inks unless you're doing it for small periods of time. Again, this is, you're working with a paint substrate. So again, it's not necessarily the best thing for your lungs. So just kind of be cognizant of that. 
Um, if you have like a fan, I would turn on a fan and just kind of blow some of those fumes away while you're working. That's what I'm currently doing um, or wearing a mask. That's another option as well. Right. I also have a pair of gloves that I'm going to be wearing just because I get paint everywhere all over myself. And so I'm going to go ahead and put those on right now and just get started here. So again, for colors, I'm going to start out with that lavender and the R43. So it's the D06 and R43. And so again, this has already been primed. I use the Kills 2 All-Purpose Primer. And so first up, I have this R43. I'm just going to go ahead and put a, a little, little stripe on there. And then I'm going to use the V06 as well. And I'm going to come over on the other side and put a little bit down. Next, I'm going to use some of the Clear Blender. And so first what I'm going to use is just a paintbrush to show you how you can use a paintbrush to kind of move some of the inks around if you don't have, you know, a blower or a hair dryer. It's okay to mix the colors together. Usually I just paint on these strings because I end up changing out the the string here. So you can either take that off in advance so that you're not painting on it, or you can just leave it and paint on it. Any option is fine. You can also decide if you want to paint on the sides, paint on the back, you can flip it over. Lots of things that you can consider on this and you're in charge. And add some more of that R43 here. Add some more blending solution. So using the paintbrush is one option. The next option, I'm adding some more blending solution there, is to just use forced air. And so that can be in the form of like this little bulb that I'm using, or can be in the form of a hair dryer as well. Now I don't think I'm going to use the hair dryer just because that makes a lot of noise for today, but just so that you have an idea of what you can do, those are some of those options. Once you kind of have like a design that you like or something that you're pretty happy with, you can start to add the metallic flake. So I like to have some of these lines and other definitions there because it's a great place to start replacing some of that metallic ink or excuse me, some of the, the metallic foil. So I'm going to use some of this Mod Podge. And so I'm just picking up a little right out of the bottle with the paintbrush. And I'm just adding it to different spots where there's a little bit of dark coloring here. And then I currently pulled out the foil and I have it in these little bowls that make it easy for me to pull out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set it right on top of the glue. And then you just let that dry. So you can keep doing it. You can do different designs. You can do little circles. You can do patterns, stripes. Another great option would be if you had like a stencil, you could use the stencil and fill in with um, fill in with the glue and then be able to put that foil right on top of it. Or you can do really large areas. Lots of options. So Mandy, one more question. Someone's wondering, will this work well on glass ornaments? Yes, it does. Um, so just be really careful with the glass ornaments as you're working with them. 
Um, my advice with glass ornaments would be to get yourself kind of like a little stand that you can essentially prop the ornament on um, because as you add ink, and if you touch it with your gloves on, it can kind of smear off until you until you seal it. Um, so find like a little stand that you could prop it up on. It also works on wood ornaments. Um, I've tried a different style of glass ornaments that are flat surfaced or bulbs. So yes. So. I have another ornament that I've already put all of this foil on just to show you essentially kind of how to, you can dust it off with like either a fan brush. So this has been sitting for a while, but you just come back over wherever the design or the pattern was at and you just dust it off. And then what you'll do, once you've kind of dusted it off, if you like it, you can always add more. In this case, I might even add some more just for another design, something like that. Um, here's another option. I mean, you can follow different lines and different traces. Um, on this one, I painted the back. So I wanted to show you that. So you can just paint the back instead of doing ink on the back or in another scenario, doing both sides so that if it doesn't matter what side of the tree the ornament is on or how it's facing, it would kind of be decorated. This one here is sealed with the varnish. And so if you can kind of see that shimmer sheen to it, and that's how you um, seal it in. Uh, Mandy? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a couple of questions. Um, those two Krylon uh, sealers that you use, um, what is the difference between those two again? Sure. So the Kmar varnish is kind of a protectant for like non yellowing. It also keeps, it kind of locks everything into place. So if you were to just use the clear glaze before using the Kmar varnish, the clear glaze would actually blend all of your inks together, it may cause some disruption and, and make it look different than how it looked when it was on the ornament originally. Ah, uh, okay. The clear glaze is what gives it that nice kind of sheen effect so that it kind of looks glossy. Okay, so you need to use uh, or you recommend using the Kmar varnish first to kind of lock everything into place? Yes, correct. Okay. And you can use other brands of varnish. I just have had really good luck with the Kmar varnish. Okay, awesome. And then is that primer that you showed earlier, is that a clear primer or does it make it white? It's an it's a white primer. So, it's a white primer. Okay. Yep. And these ornaments were this like were white, and so it didn't change the color of the ornament by putting the primer on it. But the primer is white. But you can buy clear primer too. So. Okay. And then when you bought this pack of six, they are ceramic, correct? Correct. Okay. And but you could do um, that kind of. Uh, primer on like a wood ornament or uh, would you do that on glass as well or would you utilize like the transparency of the glass to make the ink have different effects? So for the glass bulbs I would suggest finding white glass bulbs so they're yeah. they're the ones that like Michael sells them actually and they're just pure white and they would work really well and then you wouldn't need to use a primer on the glass bulb and for wood ornaments, I just prime it and then they're white, but it adds a really nice base for the color when you start adding the color to it. Oh, okay. And then let's say, for example, you use a wood ornament. When you prime it, would you still be able to see some of those textures underneath? The wood grain can sometimes show through a little bit, but depending on what you're using, it um, looks really, um, it can look really nice. It can add like an extra textural thing. Okay, and we do have someone in here. Just one last thing um, that wants to see the primer again. Um, yep. <laughs> I think uh, people might want to take a few screenshots. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I think this is really great, and this looks really good so far. I just wanted to pipe in with a couple of questions there. 
Absolutely. The more questions, the better. So if you guys have additional questions, keep throwing those out there. Again, um, using stencils, different options. There's so many things that you can do with these ornaments. So be like, feel free to explore, try new things. Um, I do want to show what some of the silver looks like in terms of the foil because that's really pretty. So I'm going to do the next combination, the BG78 with the BG23. And the reason I picked these two colors is they are considered um, cooler tones. Um, so when you think about, I'm going to bring out that color wheel again and get back into color theory some more. Cooler tones tend to be the ones that are like the purples, the blues, and the greens just naturally tend to be cooler. Warmer tones tend to be the reds, orange, and yellows. But depending on the colors that you have and what they're next to, you can change the effect in terms of a cool or warm tone. But in this case, these two colors together typically kind of create more of like that cool tone feel. And so I think they pair really well with silver because to me, silver comes across as a cool tone. Typically silver has like blue undertones. Um, so when you're thinking about those colors that it kind of can help as you're creating. So one of the things to keep in mind too, and the reason that I picked this color to kind of show as well, is some of these darker colors can stain a little bit more than the lighter colors. And so keep that in mind um, that when you drop the ink down, depending on where you drop it, it can stain the ornament a little bit, or you can put the blending solution down first and then add some more of that darker ink tone as well. BG23 here. It's a little lighter, a little softer. And then I mentioned earlier that you could add darker or lighter tones. And so I think I'm going to do that. Change plans. We're going to add a little bit of the YR30 just down here. And you won't probably be able to see it as much on the computer screen, but by adding in that yellow, it just lightens everything up down at the bottom. I'm just using my finger here too. So again, you don't even need to have tools or supplies to move some of this around. Feel free to even just smear things around. All right, so now we're going to go back to using some more of the Mod Podge. And for this one, Mandy, uh, Kathy wants to know this must be a real challenge if the ornament is round. Would it spill off? Are there like different techniques we can do when we're not working on a flat ornament? Sure. If you guys don't mind me stepping away, I can grab a circular ornament if you'd like. We'll kind of work through that. All right. So I mentioned that Michael has white bulbs. These are white glass bulbs. I don't have my stand with me, but when I was mentioning a stand, what I have usually is a little stand that's on a block of wood that I can sort of put the ornament on the stand and you can use that to kind of keep some of that stability. But in this case, just to kind of show you how it would work, you would really want to wait for the ornament to essentially dry. And so here I'm just gently wrapping it around the bulb. 
so in this case, it works a little bit better if you do have a paintbrush. So this is just a ceramic palette. Put some of that blending solution in there. And I'm going to use this paintbrush, which actually has some ink on it right now. And you can just go over it and start to blend these colors together. And so it works better to work in a line and then to start continuing the colors as you go around it. And once you start layering, it'll start to take on different textures. And you're able to kind of create some different things as well too. But that's the way that it works the best anyway, that I've found. Again, right. it's open to trying different things and just exploring and having fun with it. All right. Uh, someone else is wondering, um, can they use very thin acrylics instead of alcohol ink? Like what would the differences be between media? Absolutely. If you wanted to do fluid art with um, acrylic, you could do that as well. Um, but for this particular kind of effect that I'm getting, it works best with the alcohol ink. I'm going to grab some of this silver here. And we might be moving ahead a step or two. Uh, Samantha wants to know, can you put the Mod Podge on when the ornament is still wet or should you let it dry first? Actually, that's just what I did here. This ornament was actually wet when I put the Mod Podge down. And so it works either way. And so you're okay with either option. It doesn't have to be dry. The only thing that you want to do is you want to give it enough time once you put the Mod Podge down and the oil on top, you want to give it enough time to dry before you start dusting it off. So I think it's been, oh, about 10 minutes since we did this one. And even that, I can see that it's still a little tacky when I touch it. So I would still wait. I would probably wait a couple of hours before you come back and start to dust off the foil. Um, Mandy, I do have a question, and this isn't in the chat, but just as an artist standpoint, um, why are you using gold foil instead of, say, a pinata gold um, ink? For this one, I just wanted to add a little bit of texture, but we can certainly add some metallic if that would like, if anyone is interested in that in the chat, if you guys want to comment on that, we can do that next. Yeah, I only bring that up because I'm um, not sure if everybody ha maybe has the um, foil, but I do know that I've seen a lot of your art um, and it's beautiful with like the other types of liquid, like metallic looking inks. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm looking at the comments here. I'm seeing a yes. So I'm going to shake up the metallic here. And what I have today is the Tim Holtz alloy and foundry. Um, Michaels does sell the alloys from Tim Holtz, so this would be an option. Otherwise, of course, you can use um, pinata brass from Jacob Products. Either would be fine and both work. I'm going to stick with that um, kind of like darker palette. I think I'm going to stick with that. I'm changing it up. We're going to do, so this is the BG78. So it's that darker turquoise color. I'm going to add one drop of the metallic. And then I'm going to use a silicone brush and spread this out. Now, the reason I do that is because the Tim Holtz alloys are, they have a lot of metallic in there. And so you do not need a lot. And then I'm going to bring in that lovely lavender color. I'm going to pair these together. And add some blending solution on both sides. Now, when these two colors combine, there's a pretty lovely, like a lovely purple color that kind of happens from in there. Um, so they kind of work well together because again, this becomes pretty much analogous once the colors meet up and join.
there's a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple, a little bit of the violet, lavender color, and then green in there. Um, so I have a question just while you're working. Um, so do you like to kind of um, put all of your colors and pigments in like a line and then move them around with either like a silicone brush or air? Is that just something that you find to be really successful? Yes. So this is kind of my preferred way of doing and working with the inks. And so I just painted on some of that metallic because I wanted a little bit more metallic on this side. And by using a brush, it gives me a little bit more control to do those things. Gotcha. And that silicone brush, that's what you really like the most. Yes. And just okay. so everyone knows, these are also available at Michael's and they have them down in their um, pottery kind of aisle. So where they keep their, their clay and, and molds. So these are used by ceramicist a lot of the time. So that's where you find them. Gotcha. And then we have a question here that says, um, when using a dark color, do you use more blending solution um, than say maybe using a lighter one? Um, and can you like tone down those darker colors? Absolutely. So the best way to kind of tone them down would be to use smaller amounts. Um, so you could definitely start out with just a little bit, like let's say at the top of the ornament here, and then you could easily like kind of fade it downwards. So let me grab another ornament and I'll walk you through that. So this is of course this BG78, which is bronze and it's a darker color. If you were to start it with just a drop on top, so that is one single drop. And some blending solution you can easily start. And again, you just keep diluting it. So the more you add blending solution and push it away and over the edge, the lighter the color will be. So that is one way to buy one color and find a way to kind of dilute it a little bit. You can also dilute it by mixing it in a dish. Um, but Typically, what I like to do is if there's a color that I really like, I like to find the step down from it and then buy that as well. Because of course, with, with Copic, you have 300 and is it 56? I always get this wrong. 356 colors. So there's lots of options and you can find lighter shades. So for like BG78, you could use BG72 along with it, which is a much lighter color for it. Yeah, no, that's very true. We have so many different colors that you can choose from and um, definitely very versatile in how you can pair them up. But um, I do just want to ask with the ornament you just placed up top, was that a, what blue, green and red violet did you use there? So this one was BG78 and V06. V06, okay. Well, it's nice to see how very different types of colors can blend very harmoniously together. Yes, and so I would suggest as you're working with inks, most of you I know have, um, you know, maybe you have like a white tile around or some scrap Yupo paper or some sort of smooth surface, try blending the colors together before you throw them on the ornament because then you kind of have an idea of what you're using before, um, before you get started. And then of course this has that nice metallic sheen right in there um, because I know a lot of you, if you paint with inks, you probably have the pinata brass. So I'm gonna do one with pinata brass just so you can see that as well. So I know it's good to see some of these variations. And if you don't even, if you don't like metallic at all, don't feel like you have to use metallic because on that last BG78 that I did, there was no metallic in that whatsoever. So you don't have to do metallic. So now for the piñata brass, I tend to use a little bit more. Um, it's not, there's not as much metallic in there. And I love, love some metallic shimmer. So that was V06. And then I'm adding in a little bit of the R43. Uh, 
Um, I do have a quick question. Um, how big of a workspace do you think these ornaments are? Are they about three or four inches big? I think the actual size is a 3.25, if I remember correctly, when I was looking at them. Um, mm -hmm. So they're, they're roughly about three inches. Gotcha. Okay. They're very nice size to work on. They're not too heavy. So in terms of like a Christmas tree, anything like that, it won't weigh it down too much, so. So that's that lovely pinata brass in there. Just to show her out there. And this is still drying. And so you can always use a hair dryer to speed up the process if you really like something to kind of set it in place, or you can just let it be. All right. Um. I do have a couple of questions. I'm just looking at the chat. I know I'm chiming in here quite a bit, but um, have you ever used alcohol inks on fabric? I've used them on canvas, but not directly onto fabric. But I'm sure it can be done, although it'd be more like a dyeing process because fabric would be um, porous instead of non-porous. Oh, that makes sense. And then as a matter of trying to wash it, or if it's a garment of sorts, I imagine you couldn't do that. It might come off in the wash. So yeah, fabric seems like a little bit more of a delicate process. Yes. So um, yeah, canvas works. Um, but if it's anything that would get washed, um, it will bleed out in, in the wash. Mm, okay. And then we do have another question here that says that silver. Um, what brand was that again? Oh, sure. That is the Tim Holtz Alloy in Foundry. Oh, okay. And you said this has more of a concentrated um, metallic to it? Yes, it's a little more concentrated, so a little bit goes a long way. But it behaves like the Jacquard Products Pinata Brass. So I know people are usually looking for a silver, and this one does pretty well. Gotcha. And then we have another pretty good question here, actually. I haven't thought of this before. Um, can you remove a color um, before you seal it with that uh, Krylon uh, sealer? Um, can you remove a color or maybe like try and make something lighter? So yes, so that would be kind of like diluting it again, um, either with the blending solution, because that's what I've been using primarily today, or if you have like the rubbing alcohol in any percentage that would work as well and you could basically clear out almost an entire ornament so we'll just kind of jump back to this one here and this color is pretty dark so that's why i'm doing it but i'm just adding some blending solution on here and you can use if you wanted to a cloth or you could blow it around but essentially you can pick up a lot of what's already on there but this color in particular is going to stain the ornament a little bit. So some of the darker colors, you'll still have that staining, but it lightened it up quite a bit if you're not quite happy with like it being too dark. You could lighten it, but on these, it would be really hard to get it back to like the pure white. See, it's already lightening up quite a bit just by adding a little bit of blending solution twice. Now. On, a, on the bulb that we use, this would be pretty easy to kind of, before sealing it, you could easily wipe that away pretty fast. Of course, my cloth was a little dirty, but you get the idea. Gotcha. And then um, can you mix like that silver metallic with say um, acrylics or like um, fluid art? You can, but it clumps up because they're made chemically different from one another. Um, so if you're gonna do fluid, I would suggest using fluid paint that is more metallic based, um, unless you're okay with it kind of clumping up. I don't think I have, I don't have an example close by of that, of what it looks like, but it does clump up a little bit. 
Ah, uh, gotcha. So because that um, silver kind of metallic is an alcohol base, just like these alcohol inks, they work harmoniously. But yeah, if you're going to work with like a acrylic pour, you need to use other acrylic type um, tools. Okay. I would, unless, unless you are okay with like the texture and the clumping, because that's usually what happens. At least that's been my experience. Gotcha. Okay. And then there is one more question here that I see in the chat. Um, could you wait until say your, your ornament is dry and then could you theoretically just reprime it since the primer you're using is white and that could like cover it and give you a fresh start? So with ceramic, when you reprime it, depending on the ink, it's still going to bleed through just a little bit. So for example, if you use a darker color, like a navy or really dark crimson, like a burgundy, something like that, or even like BG78, it's likely still going to bleed through the primer a little bit. So it doesn't fully cover it up. Okay. Um, I'm looking over here at any more questions. Um, but I think we're all caught up on the questions panel. Um, but I guess from my point of view, is there anything else that you would recommend to someone that's new to doing this type of art? Just to explore and have fun. Um, so I'm giving you some basics, um, some different ways that I've, I've tried ornaments, things that I've learned along the way, but it's been a lot of trial and error, but it's really just about having fun Gotcha. And like, I'm sure exploring different types of surfaces. And um, I know you also love to use the uh, Legion Yupo paper. Um, mm -hmm. And like, do you have anything on like right next to you that you can maybe show as an example of that different surface? Sure. Let's see. Well, I do know that you were wondering about, I also have wood surfaces. So I'll show that and then I will grab a piece from Yupo paper that's right behind. This is a larger piece, but you guys can see it has some of that metallic. And so it's a lot of fun. You can, I, did, I actually glued this to a piece of wood, um, but you can also, it's a little big for the screen. Painting on wood blocks, you would use that same primer option. And so this is just the wood and you can kind of see that wood grain through there. When you were asking about like the wood grain, it does show through a little bit, but it's a fun option um, to try some different materials and paint with those inks. And of course, this is actually pretty similar to some of the ornament colors that I picked, just adding in some more of that navy there. Yeah, these look beautiful. I'm always blown away by how you can create these beautiful abstract masterpieces. And especially with your use of the metallics, kind of bringing out those highlights in those dark areas, I think is a uh, good technique. Very pretty. <laughs> um, and so I'm just reading in the chat a little bit more questions here. Um, we have someone asking how to keep your um, workspace, I guess, wet, because they're saying that they're um, area dries out pretty quickly when they work with alcohol ink. Sure. So the more solution that you can use, whether that's the blending solution or using um, like the rubbing alcohol, those would be the best for um, using essentially um, keeping that wet surface. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, I saw that you used a couple of different metallic brands. So can you just tell us more about those and how they work on the Yupo paper? Sure. So the Pinata color in brass is from Jaker Products. And so right now this is not, let me shake it up. Looks funny when it's not shook up. But again, this is that metallic that was used in the painting block that I showed you here. But let me grab a piece of so this one here. This is not on Yupo paper. This is actually on mineral paper, but it does give you an option to kind of see some of that 
J-curd brass and essentially how it mixes with, actually this is R43 up in here. Um, so you can kind of see that it has like a very nice metallic sheen, it clumps really well. Um, so if you're looking for something that has a little bit of texture and clumping um, that doesn't look like um, a pearl or pearlescence, this would be perfect for that. And um, do you store like, so when you use like Copic ink, obviously you uncap it when you're using it and then you cap it when you're done. Um, do you ever have an issue with inks drying out in that regard? No, um, but on the older bottles, so if you have any of the older ink bottles, like this one, for example, it can get a little cakey on the top, like right here around the edges. And the best thing to do to clean that up is just add a little bit of rubbing alcohol to a cloth and it cleans right up and it kind of gets rid of that tackiness. But in terms of drying, I've had some of these bottles for a couple of years and they're still working and they're still doing great. Okay, sweet. And then like, for example, the palette kind of um, underneath your piece right here, um, those have a bunch of different colors on it. Um, are those alcohol inks? And if so, um, do those dry out? Because they're like in plain air. Um, do those dry out when you're using uh, them? So these would, yeah, like in here, in this palette, they definitely dry up and I just reactivate them with a drop of blending solution and then um, just give it a little swirl and you can see it's back to being reactivated and then I can use it again. Gotcha. And so for alcohol inks, that palette right there would be um, ceramic, correct? It's not plastic. Yes. Yep. Plastic works, but ceramic works better because I can clean these out a lot more easily than plastic. Plastic will stain. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, and then because you have such beautiful art, um, let's say, you know, you have finished a commissioned piece for someone and they're going to hang it in their home in front of a window. Is there any kind of like UV protectant you would spray your art with or would you just buy a frame or, uh, or would you frame these pieces of art in general? I'm, I'm not quite sure. So I would do both options that you mentioned. So Krylon makes an archival um, UV spray. That's the one that I prefer to use. I don't have one close by to show what that looks like, but it comes in like a turquoise um, spray can. And I spray two to three coats on that. And then I use, um, I do encourage using glass that is at least somewhat of a UV level protectant on the glass. It's not a requirement, but if you're going to have it in direct sunlight, which again, I would avoid direct sunlight whenever possible for any type of art, um, but you wanna have that UV protectant because again, all paints fade, um, that's just natural. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, any kind of art, whether it's, you know, acrylic, uh, alcohol ink, pencil, you name it, it will, it's just natural component of life. <laughs> but, um, but speaking of that, uh, for the surfaces that you use, um, uh, do they need to be, uh, besides like the primer you're using earlier, do they have to have any kind of uh, protectant to them if you're just relying on like the frame? So I still tend to seal everything with the Krylon Kmart varnish in general, um, just to protect it. Uh, and then I'll and UV spray even on canvas, on wood blocks, on evil paper. Um, so I tend to do that even if it is being framed, just as a protection measure. Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, I do want to mention too, I'm trying to see if any more questions come up in the chat, but you will be teaching another class with us pretty soon. So um, that will be coming up in uh, January. And so for everybody that's here, and if you want to see any more of Mandy's um, ink art, she will uh, definitely be um, presenting and uh, sharing again. Absolutely. And then I also have just again, I mentioned earlier having some of those links and following us and all of that good stuff, have it all listed here on a sheet. So um, if you want to just learn with me and connect with me, even outside of these classes, feel free to stop by my website. 
I do have a whole page dedicated to learning um, and different options that are both um, their free options as well as some other classes and things that you can take if you're interested in learning more from me. And I have a YouTube channel, a Facebook group. So if you're not in those things, definitely check it out. Um, and then of course the supply list for today is available on the website um, through Michael's. You definitely wanna make sure to follow all of us here on Instagram because we're putting together a lot of really great things and love to share with you all. And then of course use those hashtags, cope with us and make it with Michael's. Yes, and um, this video will be up on uh, Michael's YouTube channel soon. And um, I just want to correct myself real quick. Um, Manny did teach another class with us in the past, and that is already archived on YouTube as well. So you can see a lot of her um, classes there. And please do, like she just mentioned, check out her website and her Instagram. I know in the chat earlier today, I included a link to um, one of her ornaments before. So um, yeah, please feel free to look at how she uses Copic ink along with metallics to make beautiful art. Thanks for joining everyone. I absolutely love teaching and it's so wonderful to have you here. I saw a few of you comment. I recognize so many of you that have been commenting. So um, thanks for being here. Thanks everybody and thanks Mandy.